guys, welcome back to another video. Now, it doesn't need me to tell you that my lock lab is an absolute mess. If we just have a look back back there, it's all very messy. Um, that's because I've been quite busy in the past month or so, um, working on doing some pin making, actually putting together some challenge locks, which has been really enjoyable. It's been a great way to give something back to the community. And... Um, that is why I haven't really been making so many videos as well. But um, I thought I'd make this video um, to help out a fellow picker and subscriber um, named Brian, who uh, actually got in touch with me because he'd purchased a lock to use and it turned out to be um, a little bit faulty and he tried picking it, he wasn't able to pick it and it wasn't working well out of the packaging anyway. And it turned out to be one of these locks here, uh, made by uh, equip. This is actually made in China, obviously, and then um, this is actually sold by Home Bargains in the UK, which is a, a supermarket here in the UK. Um, so what I've done is I've picked one up myself for the extortionate price of £1.99, and we're going to have a look at this. We're going to see if um, we experience any of the same problems. Uh, we're going to have a look at this in depth, hopefully and uh, talk about some quality issues that you can have with these cheaper locks. Um, what I've done is I've actually removed it out of the packaging so I don't have to make any horrible noises. Um, and I've taken the keys, they were linked onto the shackle there, just to uh, save some time. I've taken the lock out of its packaging and prepared it for this video. Um, now the issue here in the UK is that the weather really isn't very kind to locks, so people will buy cheaper locks like these, which are made from cheap materials, um, and it's guaranteed that this sort of lock will, um, in fact, rust um, and probably seize up completely after a couple of weeks in an exposed environment here in the UK. Um, and most of these locks actually don't work particularly well out of the packet in the first place. Um, these are fairly popular because people believe these are more weather resistant. Um, basically this is most likely a laminated body underneath this uh, and they just put a plastic cover over it to make it seem like it's water resistant. Uh, and generally what happens with these is that the seals fail, the water seeps in around the shackle and gets down inside there and it rusts it from the inside and you... you um, you basically just can't see it rusting, that's, that's the only difference. Um, so, for anybody who's looking to buy a lock anywhere really, this is a brand I recommend, Abus. I recommend these to anybody who needs a general purpose padlock. Um, although this looks less weather resistant than this, because this is made from higher uh, quality materials, and it's made to impressive tolerances, um, this is going to last probably 10 years or even longer than that um, with very little maintenance um, whereas you're going to be chucking something like this in the bin um, probably a month after you buy it. Um, this actually has a nano protection uh, coating on the shackle um, so it's a hardened shackle with a special coating on it and the coating really does protect it from the elements. I can uh, actually vouch for that myself. Anyway, this is the lock we're talking about. Like I said, we're going to have a look at it. We're going to see if we have any um, uh, issues with it. And uh, already having a uh, close inspection at, at it, we can see um, the way this weatherproof shroud is put on the shackle. It's It looks like they've maybe heat shrunk that on there because there's a bulge in it right down here. And right on top, um, we've got leftover material from the moulding process it looks like. Down here we've even got a flap on here. If we pop this open, let's have a look at the core. Um, pretty standard core it looks like. Um, it's a... Um, um, it looks like a cast core. Actually, I actually see scratches on there. Um, very cheap uh, and poor quality core and uh, quite an open keyway. Let's try the keys. Very curious. Oh, it does work, but it's sticky. Oh, and 
actually I believe the key there is rubbing on the on this plastic down here or the rubber um, looks like it's double locking it is actually double locking that's a giveaway which is good uh, brass locking lugs and we can see or at least I can see it I don't know if you can see that down in the, the shackle hole it's actually laminated it is a laminated body as I expected that's quite an easy way to uh, build locks um, generally what I do with some of these weatherproof locks you can normally pop the bottom rubber cover off and get much better access to the core because as you can see we've got this huge um, piece of rubber here which stops us from getting in and tensioning the core and oh we've got some writing on here 40 millimeter made in China so that's the giveaway there and oh. okay it doesn't look like the rivets on this are actually very well pressed down so after we have a go at picking this we might try and get a screwdriver in there it is act whoa it is actually moving that's something I've never seen before, <laughs> even on a, a poor quality lock, so let's have a look at that. First of all, let's have a go at picking it. Let me have a peek in here. Okay, I can see four pins inside here, so they're not lying to us about that, at least. As in, we've got four cuts on the key. I tried to pick, uh, choose some um, difficult bitting. So one issue we have with these cores here is obviously in a laminated lock we've got those rivets to watch out for because we could think that we're tensioning it when in fact we are actually stuck on the rivets here. Um, I might even go top of the keyway on this one. Let's try that. Let's go from the back. Oh, very stiff. Three. I can't actually, I think I'm hitting the warding. Well, nothing's binding up. I have a feeling this rubber on top is actually pushing the shackle out and making the locking lugs inside bind up. Let's try a different pick. Four, three, one. prodding about at the pins. I'm really not getting very good feedback off this at all. It's like everything's just rock hard inside. Well, this is a picking experience I have... can't say I've had before. Four. I'm going to change my tensioning again to bottom of the keyway. I could be... Oh, and we're open. Uh, it felt a little bit like counter-rotation there. When I went to pick it there. Perhaps not. So when I was uh, tensioning it, I was making sure the tension wrench was pulled out a little bit so it wasn't hitting off the rivets there. So that was actually a difficult pick. I can tell why... Uh, a beginner lock picker could be struggling with that, and I have just discovered this has got a plastic core in it. I'm really sorry about the camera quality today, guys. It's not very good. Um, I can see in real life that is... I don't know about the core, but the actual housing is plastic. Oh my goodness. That is dreadful. That is really bad, guys. <sighs> oh, what's happened there? Is this coming apart? What's this? Is this plastic? It looks plastic, but it's actually broken there. Oh my goodness. 
Is this actually a plastic body lock and they've just put a couple of laminated plates at the bottom? Surely not. Anyway, um, let's crack this open with a screwdriver. Because those rivets aren't very far pressed down. Can we do that? Oh, it's doing something. Oh my goodness, guys, I've never in however many years it has been of lock sports have I ever seen a lock that was that you could actually do this to. Get a bigger screwdriver. Sorry I'm not saying much guys, but this this has actually shocked me. Wow. Guys. I'm speechless. I I've never, never, ever, ever come across this before. That's the lock apart. And as you can see it's a plastic core. I'm actually very disappointed guys. Very. Can we pull the core out? Hmm. Interestingly, the core is stuck. Oh, no it isn't. It's coming out. <laughs> this makes me want to cry, it really does. Oh my goodness. Look at that guys, plastic core. Look how much slop is in that. I actually feel quite embarrassed that I wasn't able to pick this. But Brian, this is probably why you were struggling to pick this. Um, plastic cores, that's probably muffled the feedback a lot. Um, it does indeed work. Oh, and we've just ejected all the pins. Okay, I was about to suggest that we gut this. Um, and now I'm sure we're going to have to gut this. Uh, let me grab a pinning tray. Thankfully, um, I have some new pinning trays. Thank you so much to um, Tony Worrell for these pinning trays. Very, very cool and very handy to have. I've actually got another one up here that's already been used. Um, well, guys, I did not expect to be taking apart a lock with a screwdriver. I'm discovering that it had a plastic core inside. Uh, let me grab a plug follower. No, that's not going to work because we've got this tailpiece on the back. Um, I have, haven't I? I've just let all those pins drop back down. Uh, this is probably one of the messiest guttings you've ever seen. Yeah, okay. Um, literally a second after I turned the camera off, I managed to get the driver pins pushed back up. Uh, that's actually the driver pins in there because the key pins all dumped out of these holes in the bottom. Um. <laughs> uh, oh my. Uh, okay, right. You have to see these pins, guys. Oh, camera. Um. Wow. I've never seen such. Uh, those actually look fairly decent on the camera, but I've never seen such really, really shocking pins. Look at those. They're half spooled. Look at those. They're like globs of metal. Just pellets. It's not even as if there's a bar that they've sawn these off. It's, it's just... They're just lugs of metal. I... I've never seen that, guys. 
Well, um, Brian, you wondered why your lock didn't work, and I think you have seen why. I'm actually very curious to know if this is a plastic... It doesn't look plastic, I think it's just cheap cast metal. It's certainly not a high quality brass core. Um, I guess we can put these pins back in. Um, wow. I, I, I'm just speechless, guys. Speechless. It, it, it's as if, like, the plate coming off the bottom of the lock, that was bad enough, but just the plastic core and everything is just actually too much for me. Guys, this is why this lock costs two pounds. Um, you cannot get security for that amount of money, guys, um, because these Chinese lock manufacturers they cut corners. The reason why it's two pounds is because they've not used high quality materials like I was saying earlier. They've just gone and... Plastic. It's plastic guys. Plastic. This lock here has got brass in it and it's got security pins in it that do not look like they've just... I don't know, come out of a... A mouse? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I have no words, guys. Other than, do me a favour, don't buy these locks. Equip, waterproof padlock, and any other cheap lock. They're all like this, guys. Probably even this one as well. I could get this lock apart with a screwdriver. Just one of these screwdrivers. And I was going carefully about it, guys. Um... But I could probably also have forced this because it's plastic. Or or even melted it. Well, Brian, there's your answer. And do me a favour, mate, don't use this lock again. Um, I would suggest uh, probably putting it in the bin if you can't use it. I mean, it's not even heavy enough to use as a paperweight. Uh, <laughs> so there you are, guys. There's some entertainment for you. Wow. That is something I do not want to have to do ever again. Guys, spend a bit extra and buy a higher quality lock. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope that was entertaining. I hope it was, well, eye-opening at least. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.